Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello. Hi, Ray. Hi, Elena. <clears throat> it's nice to see you guys. How are you doing? I know it's a little bright over here, but I think the fabric will be really dark, so we'll, we'll adjust if we need to. Welcome back. It's been so long. <laughs> Hi, Dar. It was busy. <laughs> it wasn't really vacation, but um, it was really great. And you know, I kind of, I had those three videos to upload. So, um, you know, that kept me a little busy too. Hi, Megan. Hi, Barbara. Yeah, Elena, awesome. <laughs> I love that little animation. I hope it's not obnoxious, but gosh, I love stop motion so much. I haven't done one since I did that one. I'll have to, I'll have to do another one sometime because I love them. And I'm not good at it. That's like my best one. Took me all day. <laughs> and the lighting is still rubbish, even though I completely controlled it. It went really good. Thanks, Megan. Yeah, it went really good. She's uh, settling in. She got a job offer yesterday. Hi, Hannah. <laughs> oh, Hannah, are you pants fashionable? Because I think I got over a hundred followers from your story. I couldn't, I was like, what is going on? Why am I getting all these followers? Thank you. That was awesome. I hope, I hope they like YouTube videos and live streams. <laughs> yeah. I hope we get new people. I love it. Oh, nice, Elaine. I'm glad. Hi, Delta. Hi, Nicole. Nice to see you guys and gals. It went really good, Elena. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Hannah. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, that was fun. Sometimes that someone will say something and then there's so many, I wish Instagram didn't show you every single thing. Like you could see you've got 30 new followers and then you could click it and see them because I don't want to miss and thank the person who shared it. You know what I mean? Um, and you, it only shows you so many, you know? So, ah, yeah, exactly. Hi, Terry. Yeah. I hope you're feeling better, Elena. Ray is always good with the thoughtful stuff. Like she's always like reminding me to be better. <laughs> Hi, Shannon. How's it going? Um, all right. So I have a random assortment of stuff here on the table. So, and we have a lot of pieces to cut out today. So um, if you're new here, welcome. Um, if you've never been on a live stream before, um, you have to be logged into YouTube to say hi and talk in the chat. And it's, um, if you don't see the chat, it just says, I think it says live chat under the video. Um, you don't have to participate in chat. You can just lurk, but we love chatting and seeing what everyone's up to. Um, you're welcome to ask questions, challenge whatever I'm doing, offer suggestions. I'm very open about all of that. And it's all the levels are welcome here and um, everyone's welcome here. So, so yeah. Oh, good, Elaine. I'm glad to hear it. 
So, um, and if you're new here and you're watching chat, there is a little, um, it's like right above the chat window. When the chat's open and expanded and you can see everyone talking, there's a little thing at the top that says top chat or live chat. And you want that to say live chat because it hides, it hides mysteriously some messages and we don't know why and what, what the, what the um, rhyme or reason is there. So, because sometimes you'll be like, what are people talking about? How are they, how are they seeing something I don't see? Because that was me for a while there. Um, anyway, so um, what else can I tell you? It, there's tips at the beginning of the video to make this faster if you're watching this and it's recorded. So follow those because um, I know a live stream might be a little slower if you're looking for something instructional. I do this for free and this is the format I really enjoy. I really like interactive sewing and hanging out with people and helping people and um, I love experimenting. You won't see me do things always exactly how the instructions are. On a project this big, I will probably try and stick to the order that the instructions are going because I know there's probably not a lot of folks who've sewn this. And so if it can be helpful to anybody, I just try and make it at least in the format that you're following with your instructions. And then maybe someday someone really kind will give us some timestamps or I'll get around to it and they'll be linked in the description. So, um, what else can I say? Hi, Malin. How's it going? <laughs> um, let's see what else. So today I'm going to cut it out. I'm making this for my husband. This is the men's utility jacket by Wardrobe by Me Patterns. I'm not sponsored pretty much by anybody. <laughs> I sometimes will get like fabric from a fabric store or a pattern here and there. The Reynolds uh, top and dress last week, I got that at, um, as a gift from Helen's Closet. She just sends them occasionally with no strings attached. Um, and I was finally able to like, like sew and record something close to the release date, which was really nice. So that was awesome. I loved that project. Um, let's see, I did ha I do have a small announcement. I just got accepted to be a Minerva ambassador. So that will help out with fabric and materials occasionally. Um, I don't know a whole lot about like being a Minerva ambassador quite yet, except the rules. <laughs> but Minerva is an online fabric um, and a sewing community. So it's much like a social media site now built into their fabric and pattern store. I like, like they sell patterns, everything. So, hi Paul, welcome. Thanks for saying hi, we appreciate it. Everyone's really nice here and they love to be teased. <laughs> I'm a big teaser, so. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, it looks like Minerva has like monthly, they'll say, hey, ambassadors, these are all the fabrics we have. And then we have a couple months to sew it up. So, so that's kind of cool. Anything to help our expenses um, because then it gives me the ability to do whatever we want and whenever we want, right? So, all right, what else? Okay, so I have this weird assortment of stuff here. So I just wanted to show you a few things that I got. I'm trying to share the things I buy more often. I just feel like I always never used to just because I felt like who cares what I buy. But then I realized people do care sometimes because they just want to see options, right? They don't think I'm the like, oh, I'm going to do whatever Ceremy does. Um, and that's my name, by the way. It's Ceremy. Rhymes with Jeremy. Um, but at the same time, I think it's, it is great to see the different ways people organize their stuff or do whatever. So... Um, yeah, so anyway, the first thing that none of you need, but I'm pretty excited about, is I got vibration pads for my sewing machines. So I'm really hoping that this will help the jiggle sometimes we see on the camera when I'm going really fast. Hi, Betsy. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Sydney. Yeah, thanks, you guys. Thanks for the congrats. I've applied to lots of things and I just sometimes don't hear back or I get rejected. So I thought I'd share that I got, <laughs> I finally got accepted to something. <laughs> so I think people just don't know what to do with the live streamer. So I don't know. And I can't only explain it so many times, right? So, um, so I got vibration pads because I, what I did when I moved in here was I put down a, like real carpet padding like you would put in your home under the rugs. And I did that for noise reduction and to reduce any echo for sound to make the sound quality really good. The weird side effect is because of 
the gushiness of it, because my, my rug is actually really gushy here, um, it makes my camera, I think what happens is my machine is vibrating and it makes the camera jiggle. So it's not the machine moving, it's the camera, which is, it's been really hard for me to pinpoint. So I got these, uh, these things can get really expensive, by the way. So I got little ones for my industrial and they're just kind of these really firm blocks. Four of these. I got four of these and I got, I am only going to use two of them and put one under the serger and one under the, under the overlock. And this looks like it's an adhesive right here. So I'm not going to adhe adhere it. So we'll, we'll get to test this tomorrow. I'm pretty excited about that. As long as I can get my industrial machine on these things without, you know, <laughs> spilling any oil. <laughs> uh, I got some more fabric bins. So this is the way I organize my fabric. Um, they come flat and And so, yeah, this is, I got four more of these because I have a lot of fabric and really I have a lot of fabric that I've already used. And so I have like extras. So I got four more of those. That's just kind of like housekeeping stuff. My souvenir from my trip was a spray bottle. <laughs> so glamorous, right? Yeah, this is, you know, we were shopping for lots of home stuff. So, but I found a cute little spray bottle and I really wanted one for the office for when I iron and stuff. Cause I use steam, but you know, spray bottle is helpful sometimes when you don't want to use all the water in your iron to get that one wrinkle out, you know? So it's just nice to like douse it and I can spray with my iron too, but this is just, this is nice. So, um, if you've been here for any amount of time, you know that I'm a weirdo about my pins, like I, I'm on the search for nice pins because I feel like the quality of pins has gone down so much. I don't know what that's about. Uh, I used to just use like the quilting pins and you're gonna see, I don't actually sew with a lot of pins um, or clips, but I'm not against them or anything like that. I think they're great. And so I really liked these over the course of time, these really big, thick, and you know, they're pretty stout quilting pins but these bend like nobody's business. I don't know what happened to these. The quality has gone way down. Um, and so I ex interviewed like four different packets. By the way, pins are ex freaking expensive. I don't know why pins are so, I mean, I guess, I guess because the quality is going down, that may gives me some indication that maybe that's partly why, right? So they are kind of expensive to make. So I've seen people use these and I've wanted to try them and I just never ran across them. I finally stumbled across them when I was shopping at Sailrite. And Sailrite is where I got a couple of the notions I'm gonna talk about today for the jacket. Oh, <laughs> it does it, Shannon. I used to have an iron like that. You know what it is, Shannon, you might try seeing if there's some um, calcium buildup in the nozzle, like scratch it a little. <laughs> Cause I've had that too. I shot my cat once and he was not appreciative of getting wet. All right, so I wanted to try these because this, these are pretty short, but do you see the, the handle of the pin? You guys probably all know about these. You guys are all like experts on everything before I am, but I really like that this feels like it, it since it's holding more, a little bit more of the pin and it's in line with the pin that it feels a little more stout. And this is, this thing is stout. Like I don't feel like these are gonna bend very easily. They have all kinds of lengths and things like that. I went for these little one inch ones cause that can be enough. And then I'm gonna try these doubles. So see, these are double. These seem like they'll bend a little bit easier. So this is them in the fabric. So I just thought I'd share with you my uh, latest in my pin thing, we all have our weird things. We're always researching. Um, the the um, comes in a cool designer case is kind of rubbish. Sorry, magic pins. Oh, these are called, by the way, I saved the little thingies for you guys. Magic pins. I, cut, I just cut off the where the box was attached to it because it looked gross and, and like ripped up cardboard and it was distracting. So... Oh, of course I, oh, I don't think the price was on these, honestly. So the yellow ones comes with a hundred and the purple are 30. They are heat resistant. Yeah, designer storage case. The designer storage case is a piece of junk um, only because it's really hard to open. I feel like uh, the whole box is gonna spill. So anyway, that's my latest in my pin saga. <laughs> 
All right, and I don't even need these. I don't need pins at all for this project because we're doing a waterproof jacket. I don't know where to put these. I don't have a lot of room over here. I'll put them there. All right, and so getting to what I've got for the project. So I, you guys know about this waterproof fabric I bought. And I bought it at the Mill Inn store outside of Portland. There's two of them. Um, and unfortunately that place does not sell online. If you're ever in the Portland, Oregon area, I highly recommend going there because there's a lot of um, dead stock fabric and fabrics but from companies that manufacture clothing that you actually would buy off a shelf. So it's, it's actual legit like garment fabrics, you know? So I'm kind of out of breath because it's really smoky up here, sorry. Um, and, and, and I'm like all excited to see you guys. That's mostly what it is. So yeah, Sailorite does have interesting stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I would love to try their sewing machine that they have because they have their own sewing machine. Um, so the waterproof fabric I got, I don't know a whole lot about it. I'm just gonna be right up front with you guys. The picture you saw in the thumbnail at the beginning with the water beating up on it, that is really legit. I'll spray it with my water bottle and, and when I get it over here, it's under my pattern pieces. Um, um, a little background on me, I used to work in the outdoor industry and I worked at the top, and I'm not exaggerating, the top um, water sports were manufacturer for, co uh, for uh, kayaking and things like that similar, like dry suits and things like that in the world. Um, I was really lucky that I got the opportunity to work there as a designer and pattern drafter. And they did a lot of waterproof breathables and they were a vendor for Gore-Tex. They were the only, at the time, the only uh, manufacturer in the United States that was authorized to manufacture every single one of their laminates legally. Um, and then you know, we would design the garment and it would go to Gore-Tex. They had to test it, make sure that it was a pr would be worthy of the Gore-Tex name and tagging because you got to put those big chunky Gore-Tex tags on your garment when you sold it. And so I'm really familiar with waterproof breathables. Um, and we did have non-breathable waterproof laminates as well, which is like wearing like a garbage sack. You know, you get sweaty and you get wet in them because they don't breathe, you know, but they're really affordable too and they serve their purpose. We did things for Coast Guard, military, all kinds of people, all the Olympic paddlers, you know, all sponsored paddlers, we did all kinds of stuff. So I have a lot of experience with this. Um, so making your own rainwear, lots of people do it, and I see a lot of people do it wrong, and I'm not trying to call anyone out. Uh, I will just say that, it, but they are doing the best they can because they don't really have the same tools that are available to a factory. Like people will say, oh, I have seam tape and I'm putting it on. There, there probably is, there probably is an iron on the market that's hot enough to apply seam tape, but you'd be doing it incorrectly. And so um, you really can't seam seal, as far as I know, because I researched this pretty deeply in January. Um, and you, you're just doing the best you can with what you have. These seam sealing machines are massive. They're, it's like a really big machine and they're really cool, but they're, that's a whole another art in applying that stuff. So January, I made the Kelly Anorak by Closet Core Patterns and I made it as a raincoat and I fully lined it um, and I waterproofed it with otter wax. It's actually almost done. Um, I didn't really need to finish it until this coming fall. So that's, I decided to go the waterproofing route a completely different way with that jacket and those, those, all those videos are available. Um, so this time I'm making the utility jacket for my husband and he helped me shop for the fabric. He's pretty proactive when I'm making him something, he's happy to pick out fabric and they had a little outdoor section there and he really liked a couple of them. The one we really liked was something like $65 a yard. And even I was like, yeah, you know, it's almost four yards and you don't really need a waterproof jacket. And he, even he was like, oh God, don't spend that much, you know? So, um, so, oh my gosh, Sydney. <laughs> so um, he ended up picking out this other waterproof fabric. And like I say, I don't know much about it. So where I'm getting at is this thread right here. So I started looking at other creative ways to seam seal because I'm always up for an experiment for better or worse, <laughs> you're gonna see. <laughs> um, and I found thread that you can actually use to waterproof a garment. 
This is not that thread, but this is similar. And so the, other, the thread I found was available probably in bulk wholesale style from China. So I really don't have the capacity to buy a case of that. And so I looked elsewhere and I found on sale right that they have this thread. And it's, it's really not intended solely for waterproofing your garment. It's probably not gonna um, um, sharpen the focus because I have the autofocus off. This is called Sun Stop. And I got it from Sale Right, like I keep saying. And with the proper needle size and tension, I can make it more waterproof. So we're going to play around with that. So that's my plan with that. Um, I'm not going to do any other things. I have made raincoats with seam grip, and seam grip is like this stuff in a tube. They recommend doing it from the outside of the garment. If you make your own beautiful raincoat, I don't recommend that because it looks really bad. It looks like you put hot glue down all your seams. It'll work better, but I just recommend not top stitching things and trying to do it from the inside. So that's my side note on that. So anyway, I'm going to try this. We'll see how it goes. It is a very uh, thick nylon thread. I imagine once I undo it off the spool, it's going to go, you know what I mean? because um, this is my experience with nylon threads. I'm, I probably can't even hold that much on my bobbin, so I'm probably going to wind a few bobbins. I only have one spool, so good luck to us. Uh, all right, and so I got my Notions from Maker's Fabric, which was basically my zipper, and I got these nickel snaps. I'm going to do snaps on it. Um, I am not doing a draw cord casing. If you are making this jacket, I will still show how to do that. Uh, because I know that that's integral to the design. And then I have, I pulled up the hashtag if you guys want to see what this jacket looks like. So let me share my screen. I know I haven't answered a couple things in, in a chat either. Let's see, where is my, here we go. So you're, if you're new here, you're seeing my computer screen, so what I'm looking at. So I'm going to cover up all this mess so it looks a little easier to see. This is the hashtag on Instagram. I love that the first four posts are mine because there's just not a whole lot. There's less than, there's 19 posts. But you can see this jacket looks really great on everybody. And you'll see that it has this um, draw cord casing. And I'm going to omit that. I don't know how this one got in there. Maybe she's making it next. <laughs> That's why it's there. It looks like this gal made it for herself as well. So you could do the unisex route. I thought this guy's was uh, omitting the waist casing. It looks really sharp on him. But it does have it. You can see it right there. So um, I'm going to leave that off. My guy is pretty petite. And he doesn't really need that shaping, although it would, I can't, where am I? No. What am I at? Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm out of practice, sorry. <laughs> so um, I would say Michael's fitting issues, I think he would say, is the fact that his shoulders are still pretty broad. He was a fencer, you know, like with a sword uh, for a really long time. And even though he's a pretty small guy overall, like think of think of like a, a professional uh, a bicyclist, you know, like in the Tour de France, like that's kind of <laughs> how he's built. Um, and his shoulders slope. So he's he's got the shoulders for like a medium or a large, but not the rest of his body sometimes. So um, I'm going to just remove a little bit out of the back because that's where I found it to be a little bit loose and baggy on him. And I see that in the photo for a lot of folks. And if he was using the draw cord, he could cinch that and it would look really nice, but he doesn't really need that. So anyway, that's where we're at. I've caught you up to date. I know that was probably all really boring, but I wanted to just kind of set the tone. So <clears throat> you may use prim, thin, all metal silk pins for everything. They don't bend. Hmm. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Emily. How's it going? Yeah, see, I, everyone always says that. They're like, oh, I like the silk pins. Those things are really, for me, they bend just too much. Hi, Penny. How's it going? All right, so let's, let's make some room. This stuff is stinky. 
I don't like that smell, you know? I hope that stays. All right, so here we are making the utility jacket and I'll go over a little bit of the sizing for those of you who are interested. Um, let me get the metric out real quick. And then we're gonna jump into the, I'm gonna just make a small change to the back size wise. And then we're gonna jump into cutting. Oh, this is what the back looks like. It's a much better picture. Am I holding? Oh, I'm holding the chart. Okay, cool. <laughs> I know, but they're expensive, Sydney. <laughs> All right. So let's see. So this goes from a, uh, this is body measurement. So for imperial and inches, it goes from a 28 and a half inch chest up to a 47 inch chest in metric. That is a 72 centimeters to 120 centimeters. It's quite a bit of ease, quite a bit. Um, I'm going to say like, like 20 inches. That's kind of a lot. 20 inch. Oh, no, sorry. That's centimeters. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. It's still a lot. It's like nine inches. I'm going to say 10 inches somewhere in there. Yeah, they might Malin, but you know, when you're buying pins in person and it's a quilt store, they don't have a whole lot of silk pins. You know what I mean? But I do agree with you. And I think, well, the reason you're saying that you really like, hi, Martina, really like those Malin that not distorting your fabric, which I, I appreciate that comment actually. That's a really good thing to consider. Um, if you get a bit thicker pin, then it might start, you know, distorting. 0.5 millimeter, and these are, I knew what they were yesterday. So the yellow ones were 0.6 and these Purple ones are 0.5. Those bent a little when I was using it, but not in a bad way. And I think bending, if they're gonna bend and return, that's fine. It's when they bend and don't return, like they're not willing to kind of give, you know, give and take. I don't know, Sydney, maybe that's not, that sounds pretty affordable to me too. Okay, let's get going. Enough about this. All right, so I have a lot of pattern pieces, but the change I'm gonna make, that's so bright, let's keep it over here. I'm going to, I'm trying to find a pen you can see in the camera. Hi Tammy, how's it going? Man, I need to drink a lot of water today. <clears throat> There's a really big fire <clears throat> near here um, and they're really holding it from going this way. Um, and the smoke has, hasn't been bad. It was bad Sunday, but we weren't here, <clears throat> but today it is kind of bad. And I'm closer to it being here at my office than at my house. I'm probably like 10 miles from it actually, which is crazy to think about. Um, but if you saw the terrain, it's nuts. The train's nuts, what they're fighting. It's all like vertical, it's like a vertical canyon. All right, so I printed out three sizes. So what you're seeing here, I did have this printed by a copy shop and I use one locally. They're very kind and they will, if there's a layers feature on the pattern, they'll uncheck all the boxes of all the sizes I don't want. And so I usually like for my husband, I'll, I, I printed out three sizes so I can kind of, you know, pick and choose and maybe fluctuate. So it is Sydney. They're, they're um, evacuating the um, part of Lake Almanor though. But that's like the, the west side of Lake Almanor. So which kind of surprised me because I was like, oh, I thought this thing was holding. It's going east and north. It's butting up against the burn scar of the campfire that was here and the burn scar from the, um, what complex, they call them all these crazy names. The something complex last year, which doesn't help you. Bootleg? No, that's the, that's the Oregon fire right now, right? The bootleg fire. The, they named the fire for a street 
until they start merging. And when they merge, they, then they, it changes to a complex. And then you have all these different agencies involved and you're trying to figure out who to go to for information. Yeah, but this is the Dixie that's near me. I really hope it's our only one. If this is the one for the season, I'm fine with this because it's threatening the least number of homes ever, you know? It's still threatening homes and people are evacuated, but still. They're way out there. Okay, so this is the lining piece right here. Try and keep away from the light there. And um, I'm going to, there's a pleat at the center back it looks like. I'm just going to, I'm just gonna cut out a little bit. I'm trying to think, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just cut a, no. So the change I'm gonna make to this jacket, cause it looks like, uh, I can draw. Oops, my husband's looking. He has pretty near waist there. It looks kind of like this, all right? So this area right here, this was kind of big on him. So I could, you know, pivot from here to here and close this. But then when I remembered there were these little princess seams, I'm going to probably take it out right here to nothing at this yoke. So then I don't affect anything here. So I'm gonna leave all of this unaffected so I don't have to change any of those pattern pieces. So it's kind of the simplest way to be able to change this. I'm gonna focus on, see we have these two pieces here. So this is the center back. This is that princess seam armhole the yoke seam. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably overlap this a little bit, you know, like get rid of, just shave it through here. Cause this right here was where it was the bulkiest across kind of this back area here, low armhole and down. And then this is the piece that goes underneath it. Oh, that is so weird. This is the center back. Oh, okay. I was going to say, <laughs> why would they do it that way? Okay. So these are my pattern pieces here. And then I'm going to leave the yoke the same. This right here, this piece, this goes to the yoke. So this is regular fabric. This is lining. You know, when you look inside the jacket and when the jacket's hanging on a hanger and you can still see self fabric through when it's hanging on a hanger, um, but then you look inside and you're like, oh, it's lined. There's a whole nother fabric below it. This is that, um, what's this called? A, not vanity thing, um, hanger appeal or something like that. There's a name for this little piece, like a technical term that they would call it. You know, and then you'd see someone's label, you know, stitched on there, you know? So I was kind of hoping that if I made this change to these pieces, and the lining piece, I could not affect this piece here. I definitely don't want to affect any of this. You got to think about all the pieces involved. And if you can not affect those, that's great, right? So, so let's just set these aside and see. The, the thing is like the lining is sewn only in the front and the back, not to the sleeves. So the lining is attached to itself at the shoulders and the side seams, but at the armhole, it's attached to the jacket. So that's kind of different from a fully lined jacket. The lining normally would be attached to the sleeves and maybe at the cuff at the end, that's where your lining would be attached to the jacket at the cuffs, at the hem, the center fronts, and possibly at the neckline or hood or wherever, right? But it would free float everywhere else, the armholes, the side seams, the shoulders, but because this is attached to the jacket at the armhole and you're gonna clean finish it so it looks kind of nice on the inside, you gotta make sure that if you change any of this, you change the lining so that it's the same thing. So, cause if I laid these pattern pieces on top of each other, they would probably be identical. They better be. <laughs> so the other thing I might do is a uh, flat felled seams on the sleeve and the armhole. And so I need to think about that. I was actually gonna add that seam allowance yesterday so I would remember, I forgot. All right, so let's just take this away here. I'm gonna use a red Sharpie. It's kind of thick to do pattern changes with, but you know, 
I'm going to use my grain line ruler. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to leave it a zero up at the top here. And so I'm going to use this outer line. That's his size. And so let's just mark the seam allowance on here so we have a visual. So my red line is my sew line, okay, for the size I'm working on right here. Do you want me to tone down the color? I mean the brightness? Just a little bit. I'll try and be fast. I'll try and be fast. That helps nothing. I feel like that made it worse. What if I zoom it in? Is that better? For the, just this part? Tell me what you guys think. It's kind of close. So I'm going to leave it, like I said, I'm not going to remove any at this juncture here. So you got to remember, don't just start trimming close to, like say, oh, I want to go in, you know, I want to remove three eighths here and I start cutting it off here. And then you taper to this point here, that cut point. You will, you will affect the seam allowance there. So you got to make sure that you're doing this on the seam line. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do about three eighths on each of these pieces. So it's about three quarters. Is that what I want to do? Yeah, I want to do about three quarters on each of those seams. So it's about an inch and a half narrower across the mid back. That's my plan. So it is the seam allowance amount, the same amount. So we're going to taper it. I'm just going to write, put in the seam allowance for you guys. This has a built-in casing at the waist here. I'm going to cut it out, but we're going to cut it off when we go to sew it because I'm going to show you how to sew it and then I'm going to cut mine off. Hopefully I don't mess anything up when I do that. All right, so I'm gonna take off this 3 8 here and I'm gonna taper it to nothing there. And so I think what I'm gonna do is just, I'm trying to decide so I don't get confused with my seam allowance on the camera. So, <clears throat> I'm trying to think, do I just change color? And I'll change color. <laughs> All right, so we want to stay there and we're going to trim this off and we need our seam allowance to stay the same. There it is right there. And so we're going to go to this edge right here. And so this way, if I go to this seam line here, because I marked it all the way across, I'm not going to affect this length right here. Same here. We're going to remove three eighths and we're going to go straight to this point right here. I feel like I'm being very confusing about this. So in other words, this right here, this line right here is my sew line, right? This blue line. So I'm going to go to there to remove my 3 8 to that juncture. And see, it, it, it could end up even flaring out and making this section a little wider, and that's okay. Just draw in my 3 8 here. So now I'm trimming off all of this. And so now when I see my seam allowance here, it's in the exact same spot as it was before that juncture. All right, so let's let's transfer these notches. Uh, it's kind of hard to see these. Closer is better. Okay, good. Yeah, it seemed like the bright, like making it less bright just made it brighter. All right. I'm going to trim this off so I don't get confused right now. I'll just use my rotary knife. Blue line, blue line, blue line. There we go. <laughs> All right, so this one, and now we've affected this join to the bottom here by three quarters of an inch. 
This is a pretty much a square right here. So I could just trim it off the back or, you know, like go in the middle here and just overlap it, right? So I'm just gonna draw a two inch parallel line here and then a three quarter inch line like this. And I'm just gonna take that out. I'm just gonna fold it. That'll be cleaner and neater. I'm removing that three quarters that I just removed at the top there, just like this. And then that way, if I want it back, maybe on a future jacket, I can still use this piece. Oops. All right, and so now we have these pieces adjusted. Like that, all right? There's no notch on here to indicate where the juncture is of this upper back to it. So we don't have to worry about where we put that, remove that amount. All right, so those pieces are done. Now I just need to decide about my lining. And so I think the best thing to do would be to slash and pivot it out because then I don't have to change this fold here, the neck, the armhole. And so I'm just gonna go to the juncture up here where the seam is. So we're gonna put a 3 8 mark. I'm gonna do it about like right here, right? So this is where I'm going to cut to that juncture there. And this piece is massive. <laughs> it, it did look a little long on my husband, but you kind of want that when you're using a jacket outside, you know? And so I'm gonna cut up to this point here and I'm gonna cut down to this point here. You see people do this all the time, you know what I mean? Where's the scissors? Here we go. Doesn't even have to be a straight line, but you know. We're gonna pivot it out. And then we're gonna pivot to that point there. And I think what I'm gonna focus on is that it's three quarters of an inch smaller down here because this is going to sew to the um, outer at the hem. And then we're gonna make it overlap. I'm pretty sure, I'm trying to think, I think this sews directly to the hem. So we're gonna do it right to there. I'm gonna use the, what I just did was I measured three eighths of an inch up from my cut line, which happens to be on this dashed line. And so that's where I'm going to overlap to, is to that dashed line right there. This is the three quarters I'm taking out, okay? Man, this thing is really big. Let's put a few pieces of tape in here. And now I, I, I'm done. I don't have to change any of, I don't have to change that uh, back yoke that goes to there. Back yoke, that's not what that's called. I can't remember, it's got, a, it's got kind of a cool name. Hanger flash, is that what it is? No, what the heck is the name for this pattern piece? Hmm. They're calling it a back neck facing, but there is kind of a cool name for it because when it's hanging, when your garment's hanging up in the store, it looks nice from the outside. All right, put a few pieces of tape here and then we'll get to cutting. So I feel pretty good about that. I'm glad I removed that. It was the one thing I saw my husband and he was like, it feels okay, you know? <laughs> He's like, yeah, it's kind of baggy back there. And it looks kind of baggy in the pictures, but they get they have the waist casing and he's not gonna have that, so. All right, so let's get rid of all of this. We will zoom back out. Please let me grab you, there we go. And let's get cutting.
All right, I have a new blade today. Let's see how long it lasts because, you know, I always hit my weights like a dingus. I'm gonna cut my, I kinda wanna cut the lining first just to get it off the table. Wait, where is that piece? There's this one. I'm looking for my front lining. I kind of have this layered so that it is like things together. There it is, it is on the bottom. It was just folded away. Look at how narrow that is. Everybody is really quiet today. It always makes me so nervous. <laughs> All right, so this fabric is amazing. Look at the face cam. It's more of this mustard color. I love it. And um, I didn't mention this fabric, but I got this also from Maker's Fabric and it is a Japanese cotton ripstop. So see the texture of it? Can you see that ripstop? And it's stretchy. It comes in some really great colors, but look at that. It's got some pretty good stretch. Stretch is not required for the lining of this, because, but because it's a, um, <laughs> we won't tell Sydney or Nicole. <laughs> Um, but because it's a woven and it's a stretch, it's still gonna be stable enough to use as the lining. And do I think he'll get any benefit from the stretch? Not really, because it's not like you could stretch because it's the jacket's fixing it, right? So, hi Heidi, how's it going? Another pair of Arden shorts, nice. <laughs> I know you're still here. I can see there's a lot of people here. It's okay if you're quiet. I tell you guys, it's totally okay. All right, so the one great thing about using this really nice lining fabric is I only needed a yard. And I kind of found it by accident because I was looking for the snaps. And lately my go-to place to get that is from Maker's Fabric. They have a really great selection of all of them. They're always in stock. And I already have the hardware, but if you don't have it, it's on sale there too. So. What, can I talk about ripstop? I have kind of a weird feeling about ripstop. So theoretically, if you were to rip your pants or whatever, it won't go past a certain point. I feel like there's more to the story about this stuff because I find it to be really fragile. Not this stuff, not this stuff at all. This is pretty stout. It has some really great weight. I would actually guess this to be about eight ounces or so. Let's see if I have a... You get a really nice little card with your fabric from them. Um, it doesn't tell me that, but it does say it's 97% cotton and 3% polyurethane. Japanese stretch cotton ripstop, and this is the mustard. It's 53 inches wide. Um, I don't know if any of you were here in the 80s and 90s when ripstop was kind of really popular. Like think dolphin shorts. And um, I mean, it's dolphin shorts, kind of like it wasn't. It wasn't really dolphin shorts, but think like oh, just like lightweight track jackets and stuff. I'm just cringing thinking about all of it. Um, and the stuff, if you uh, use that stuff, it was a thready nightmare because they weren't kiss coating synthetics then. So what I mean by that is if you were to buy like, say you go and you're gonna buy some Cordura nowadays, I would challenge you to find it without the Kiss Coat because it's become so ubiquitous to get it with this Kiss Coat and the Kiss Coat is like a, um, it's just like they laminated it with something and it's when it's a Kiss Coat, it's just barely anything. But that barely anything is 100% is quality of life as a sewist and when you go to cut it out, it doesn't unravel like a Dickens. And that's what happened, like ripstop in general. Like I remember at one store I worked at, I was, I remember I was like 26 years old. I worked at this fabric store. She never had synthetic. She always had uh, natural fibers, but my old boss gave me this opportunity. My old boss was like, he was in LA and we were at the very top of California. Like we were a long way away, like a 14 hour drive away. And he said, hey, we have all these sample fabrics from the design room do you think the fabric store you're working at would like them for dirt cheap? And she jumped on it, which was crazy because they were all these crazy fashion forward fabrics from working at the time. 
that I worked for him. I worked for him in a couple of places, and the last place we worked together was for a um, tween kind of vibe, you know, kind of like junior and tween. And so it was pretty out there fabrics, and she was like, yeah, let's do it. And the stuff sold like that. It was really fun. But she had this bin of all these rip stops, and they, I just, just looking at the bin, even though it looked tidy, if someone picked a fabric out of there, I'd almost cry because as soon as you started pulling it out, there'd just be all this fluffy thread and it tangled. It was awful, you know? Yeah, a kite would be ripped. Stop. <laughs> your, oh, your sinus is hurt. I'm sorry. Oh, the smelling the smoke. Yeah, right? Exactly. That's, I imagine, yeah. That does sound terrible. Um, yeah, that's so interesting. I I smell phantom smoke, but this is real for you. <laughs> but um, anyway, the ripstop is historically not my favorite fabric, but in this case, it is. It's gorgeous. It's really lovely. Really feel you can hear it, right? It feels really nice. I bought it in this color and I bought it in this color here. A rust. Um, I'm there's a secret project under there, but I'm I'm pairing it with this like photo exposed leaf print type of stuff. This is a stretch poplin from Maker uh, Hearts Fabric. So um, she has some really great colors. I thought it'd be great for the lining, and my husband was down, so I was thrilled. Made my job a lot easier. So I'm using it for the lining, and I think it's gonna be really great. And you don't need a whole lot, so you can kind of get a nice fabric, you know? Kind of has that nautical vibe, doesn't it? <laughs> Six minutes to drink it. Ugh, gosh, you guys. I'm glad you're hanging out here. All right, so I'm just gonna make sure this is on green. And... You know, I'm kind of tempted to refold this fabric and get as, like, maybe get a nice size scrap. Would I get a nice size? Not really. I don't know if it'd be, it'd be worth it. Yeah, I don't know if that was very helpful, Terry. You know? But this is nice. I like this, so. I definitely could tell by the picture that it wasn't the stuff I kind of grew up dreading. Oh, that stuff was a nightmare. Nice new blade, so I'm going to be a little bit of a try-hard right now because... <laughs> oh, my God. I say that, and then I don't do a very good job. Oh, I already cut the armhole out. This is why I should have added that seam allowance. So if I do a flat felled seam, if I do a flat felled seam on an armhole, which I've done before on the Fairfield button up. Wait, right? The Fairfield button up? Where did I do an armhole? F uh, where did I do an armhole flat felled seam, you guys? Was it the Fairfield? I know I did that on the underarms. There's not really a whole lot of markings on this, so I'm going to take away the pattern pieces right away so that they're not in my bin. But um, if I do the... I'm going to take away a bit of this paper like this so I can see if I'm on the fold. <laughs> Never done that before, but it's kind of handy, huh? Because I'm thinking about, like, usually your fold, your, I mean, your um, armhole seam gets pressed toward the sleeve, right? So if your seam gets pressed towards the sleeve, doing a, f a flat fold seam, and I remember when we did it, it went to the body of the garment, and it felt a little bit weird. But, um, oh, no coffee after 2 p.m. <laughs> 2 p.m., you know, it's 
It just moves around then. It's tomorrow's 3 p.m. <laughs> um, if I do that flat filled seam on the body, I'm just trying to decide what do I like? What do I want, you know? I think it's easier to do it. What do I think it's easier to do? Do I think it's easier to take the sleeve and go this way onto the body? Hmm. I'm genuinely, what if I folded it under and top stitched it to the seam allowance? That way my top stitch isn't on the outside of the garment, making it more waterproof. Huh, kind of like, I'm thinking hard about this. What do I want? Now, this isn't gonna be his primary raincoat. He's got, you know, we worked in the outdoor industry. He's fine for raincoats. <laughs> I'm gonna mark my top of my, uh, top and bottom of the center. Yeah, there you go. Glass of wine. See, Ray, I, I used to do that. I would be like, oh shoot, I, I had wine too, or coffee too late in the day, and then I have a glass of wine. You know, it's like a reverse speedball. <laughs> you chat on, yeah, I do that too, Elena. I kind of want to save a little bit of this fabric. I don't know why. All right, so now we're gonna bring in all these pieces. There's a lot of them. This fabric is so wide, it's hanging off of my table. <laughs> Do you mess it? Yeah, reverse speedball, Nicole. <laughs> yeah, because you know, like, sometimes I really want to have a coffee in the afternoon because I'm having a treat. So then I have a glass of wine afterward. <laughs> I don't drink very much though. I'm kind of a lightweight. <laughs> I'm not giving you, you know, medical advice here. All right, so my fabric is, is hanging off of the table. It's hanging off about this much. It's pretty wide. Let's see what the width of this is. Wow, it's 62 inches wide. That's about as wide as you're gonna find. It's pretty cool. So our longest pieces are these plackets. We have a collar. This is the lower back, um, not on the fold. I don't think any of this, oh, this is actually, I take that back. That's on the fold, side back, back yoke. Uh, there's extra, it seems like a lot of pieces too because you do a left and a right front. We're just gonna kind of lay these out. This, I've never uh, sewn a, or seen a casing that is sewn like this. So I kind of feel a little bit sad that I'm not sewing it the way it is in the instructions. I'll probably cut out a, a miniature, not a miniature, but just like a mock version of it so we can go through it together so I can show you how to sew it. I, I know it sounds like I might not know how to because I've never done it before, but <laughs> it, it's it's really clever. It's almost like a gigantic flat felled seam because this right here is your casing seam and you sew it together, you know, with your lower piece, trim one away and then fold it over and stitch it down. It's pretty clever. I've got all those Streamlabs notifications. I know I don't have those happening at the same time, so I'm not sure why they come up at the same time. 
All right. I wish you could uh, see better here. They cut their fabrics on the grain. You know how I love that. It makes me so happy. This is, this is one on the fold. Cut to mirrored. This doesn't say fold, but this is the fold here. <clears throat> the, the center back. Oh, do I flip the fabric over? This one's on the fold too. Who else? <laughs> I don't think anybody else is. I always fold my fabric so that it's kind of um, like an accordion at the end of the table. Makes it pretty easy then. <laughs> oh my gosh, 10 minutes, five minutes. That's some fast sewing, Sydney. Jimmy John's chocolate chip cookie. What the heck is that? It's so good you made coffee for it. Oh, that is so dark. I ended up pre-washing this fabric uh, mainly because I, I ended up getting a lining fabric that was lighter in weight. This one's not on the fold. This is really throwing me off. But these are. I'm gonna look at the picture, you know? Cause the less seams, the better. Oh yeah, look at that. That's kind of a cool style line. Mentally fast sewing, yeah. <laughs> I'm totally guilty of that, trust me. I'll just record this video, it'll be really fast. Yeah, recording the video, that's no problem. Then I gotta edit it. Hi, Hannah, how's it going? Another Hannah. Oh, I don't know if the other Hannah is still here, Pants Fashional. Your name gets stuck in my head, by the way. Um, I wanna know what you use to mark your, your pattern envelope. Are you using some sort of like label maker? Is that what that is in the picture? So she shared a picture of organizing her patterns and she's using the same clear sleeves I do but hers look way better than mine because she's labeling it with this black and white, very consistent looking thing. Fidgety adjusting time, yeah. All right. All right. I'm gonna keep all these pieces with the pattern pieces, mainly because of this casing. A, a label maker, a 10 year old Epson. Okay. I like, it looks really sharp because I like the black and white, you know, and the labels I was using, you know, originally they're not, they don't stick. And so I have to tape them on. They're like Avery labels, you know? So I don't know. So then I was, I found my old stuff, this stuff. I found, I have a roll of this dry erase tape, so then you can just cut a little section of it and then you can use a wet erase pen, right? That means I have to rely on my own handwriting. And I feel like the white kind of gets, it's kind of, you know, hard to see. 
You know what I mean? But I'm not sure I want to you know, go the route of a label maker. Okay, did I already mark this? I did. Okay, so we'll do a tiny little nip at the center here at the top and the bottom on the fold so that we have our center marked. Yeah, the clear label tip didn't show up. Yeah, so then you use the, that, yeah. No, the black looked really good. I like the, how visible it was. I think what I'm gonna get is more magazine box holders, you know? Magazine box holders. You know, the, um, those like little stand-up boxes. Sydney has those too. I have a few on there and they help the best as far as it goes with like uh, kind of corralling them in sections. I wanna get more of those. And maybe I would do them um, so I can look at them from the front. But I really like how much, how little room they take up being on the, like all lined up, you know? Um, is it removable? Hey, yes, removable. Yeah, so this was an experiment for the booth when we were when we were like looking for ways to mark the products in our booth. And I wanted it to look nice and that was definitely not the way to go like as far as my booth goes. Did I just cut this really badly or Yeah, that I did. Okay. So when I cut my husband's um trial out, I just taped together all the back pieces and made one big back piece. And so, and then I cut on the largest line because I was like, hey, I can always go smaller. All right, same thing I'm gonna knit. Can you guys see? Yeah, a little bit. Knit my neck. So this, if you're gonna do the little shoulder tabs, this does have shoulder tabs, things like, think like a members only jacket. That mark is for you. I'm not doing that, my husband doesn't want that. Sharpie on green paint or snap the clips. Oh, cool, Beverly. Hi, how's it going, Beverly? Yeah, your magazine box, that's what they're called. What did I say? Whatever I said didn't sound quite right. Your silhouette to cut them. Gotta be a better Sheldon labor. <laughs> yeah, so um, I ended up, and you know what other kind of tape there is, Ray, is um, chalkboard tape, so you can get tape just like that, but it looks, it's chalkboard. And then you can get a chalkboard pen. And that, we ended up going that route, but only, um, only with like, no, we didn't go that route. I ended up getting peg hooks that had a label holder. And then I just printed them out. And I used a paper that looked like brown craft paper and I printed a black frame around it and put it in black. It looked really nice. You know, it was simple. It was really easy to read and it didn't rely on my handwriting, which if I'm in a hurry, it's not going to look great. And I'm in a hurry in my, my booth, you know, so it also meant I had to really think out my booth plan before. So that's the drawback, but it really is a good thing to go through, you know, when you're at home. All right, right center edge, left center edge. So I'm going to open up this side and cut this. Now I want to see if I can tell the right from the wrong. So let's let's try my spray bottle on here. Oh yeah, it just it just beads up. Can you see that? Let's see the other side. Do I think one is more waterproof than the other yeah i do <laughs> you see these they're just bouncing on around can you see that <laughs> it's pretty cool whoa getting all wet here yeah exactly ray yeah it, well if you use a wet erase marker you can use dry erase but you know i feel like if you accidentally touch it you're going to be erasing it so that's why i do wet erase 
I would like <laughs> something to get all this. The water's not getting soaked up, you know. <laughs> so I felt like this side was more waterproof. So we'll consider this the right side. And let's cut off lower right front, right front. I'm just going to cut off a chunk here. Lower left front. Left front and left front. Okay. That fabric is right side up. No, it came like that. The water, the fabric is waterproof. It's, it's a kind of a lightweight fabric. Um, I don't know much about it. It's my only concern because you never know, you know? You never know how long it's gonna last. It's definitely from a manufacturer, but it didn't say much on the end of the bolt. So, you know, it's a risk. But we're all about our experiments here, right? <laughs> and, you know, I already went through that whole process of doing the otter wax and I kind of went the extra mile on that one. So I wanted something a little simpler. I'm just getting my grain line here. So see again, this is this casing right here. This big notch. 14. So let's see, 13 and three quarters. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I did talk a little bit about the waterproofing. And so my plan to make it the seams waterproof, and I'm really hoping this works. This feels, it's probably hard to imagine, but this, this feels softer and drapier now that I've washed it than the Japanese ripstop does. So the nylon thread is going to be a little chunky on here. It's feeling like that to me where it didn't feel that way before I washed it. It had, it must have some sort of, um, you know, finish on it when it's being manufactured. I, I know that I didn't wash the finish off to make it waterproof because the, how waterproof would that be if it washed off in the rain <laughs> on the first time, right? So I know that waterproof garments are totally fine to wash. If you have like a, a Gore-Tex jacket and you're finding like it's not as waterproof as it used to be, um, you should wash it and dry it on low. That usually perks up the waterproofness of the DWR finish and um, you'll get some more life out of your jacket. If it's not Gore-Tex, I can't really speak to all those other, there's so many different ones out there nowadays, but you might just, you know, Google your company that you bought your jacket from. Because a lot of them can just be kind of re-waterproof re just by throwing it in the washer and dryer. That seems so counter and you think, oh, but it's synthetic. I don't want it, you know, to melt or something weird. What is, oh, that is that pattern piece. Okay, I'll leave that there. Even just putting it in the dryer kind of reactivates it sometimes. Okay, cut this notch out. You need this drill hole for your draw cord if you're gonna do the draw cord. And note that when you're doing things like the draw cord and um, things like that, you're gonna to need to be prepared to put in buttons and buttonholes. 
much earlier than you probably want to. You're doing it kind of in your first steps, just so you know. So if you're like all suited and booted to, you know, get sewing and you think you've got all your bobbins together and then you're like, oh shoot, I need to get another one. Whatever it takes, you just might want to have that so you're not like, oh, I don't want to get that machine out. That would be my reaction. I'm kind of whiny sometimes about changing thread color, changing machines. Am I off camera? Almost. <laughs> All right, left front. Hey Jules, how's it going? Cool. <laughs> you can feel like it's very exploring a rabbit hole. <laughs> I think I'm gonna use this as for one of my plackets. why I kind of left them at the top. So there's plackets and facings, and I think that this actually might be really great for one of the facings. Let's see. I might be able to get a pocket right there too. I might start researching the thread and um, doing some samples on the tension. I'm not, I don't have high, high hopes for this thread being a really great waterproofing agent. I'm, I'm like, you know, cautiously optimistic because it'd be, it's so much, there's so much more work goes into waterproofing a garment than just being like, Oh, I'm gonna get this thread and it's gonna be perfectly compatible with my fabric, you know? But we can hope, right? I feel like it was worth a try and I think it was only like $9, you know? So this takes interfacing and I'm gonna think about that. I might, what I, I might, what, might want to do a example or a, an experiment on using my woven fusible interfacing on this. I'm not sure how, how that'll work on this stuff. So I'm kind of cautiously optimistic on that as well. If I don't think I can use um, that interfacing, I, I'm not gonna use my Palon fusible. I'm not huge into the fusibles. I feel like it would just be kind of a good stabilizer for this. We're already in that synthetic fabric realm anyway. Um, I might look at a, gosh, see I don't wanna use just a, usually what I would use is like a cotton poplin as my interfacing, but I don't wanna do that in a waterproof garment because that cotton, if, especially if it's up close to the seam edges and it's sewn together and it rains, it's gonna act like a wick. So say your jacket's waterproof, but then all of a sudden it feels kind of heavy and wet in there, that interfacing, if it's going up to the cut edge and near the seam where you're stitching through, water gets through there. Maybe your jacket's pretty much repelling all, a lot of it, but the cotton might be grabbing onto it and then, you know, because it's hydrophobic and the outer garment, outer fabric is hydrophilic. And so it's going to wick it inside the inner lining. So it's those weird things you gotta think about when you start getting into these waterproof fabrics. And I know that seems probably a little overwhelming to, to think like all these details, but it's just something I like to think about. So, all right, so I have all these pockets here. This one, cut one. Ooh, that's my biggest one, so I'm gonna go for that. It fits all the fabric. I really deserved a new blade. I'm so glad I changed it. You know, sometimes you just deserve a treat. You know? It's kind of like when I, you know, I buy a, a, a water sprayer bottle as my souvenir. Not that I needed a souvenir from <laughs> a trip to move my daughter into a new 
apartment. <laughs> but I was like, ooh, water bottle. I also got a, um, a soap dispenser for foam soap, which my family loves foam soap. And I've never seen a soap dispenser for that, only for regular, you know, soaps. And, and also then we can make it ourselves because we use, we get refillable packages, but it's just, you know, it's not the same. All right, so this fabric was laid here right side up. I wonder how good this waterproof fabric will be. I hope it's good enough. Yeah. Yeah, the whole waterproof world, it's, it's pretty cool to think about, you know, like at first it's a little overwhelming but if you're kind of like me, I'm kind of into, ex into experiments and stuff like that. Um, we had a dunk tank, not the kind you see at the fair, <laughs> but we had a dunk ta tank at our place for in the repair area. <coughs> Sorry. And there we would, you know, when they fixed a garment, so people would... Um, a lot of kayakers walk through blackberries in their dry suits, their $900 dry suits. <laughs> and you guessed it, it's not waterproof anymore. And then they're like, will you please, please fix it? And so they will, you know, send it to, our, the, to their repair department and have it fixed. And they have a dunk tank to kind of check these things. And so um, I would be out there, you know, just checking things. Looks really crooked. It is really crooked, but it's crooked the other way. And it would really, you know, it was really fun to like hang out there and talk with the people that, you know, do all these repairs because they have to get really clever and it still has to fall within the parameters of being acceptable as a gore product, you know? So I always loved like exploring different ideas and the design time there was pretty long. Like we had about nine months to design garments and then about one month to get it into production, which isn't very much time at all. Uh, but it would be close once we went to a show after the nine months. And um, we, it gave us a lot of chances to experiment with stuff. And so you'd have like all these different hoods and pockets and things, you know, floating around. And that nine months isn't, like you're, you don't have nine months to finish the garment. You have nine months to have done many of them, sent them out to your paddlers to try them, you know. So it nine months can go by really quick when you're waiting on some boater who doesn't even have cell service for a month because they're in some crazy part of the world. That just all of a sudden felt thicker, and I think it's just because the paper's wet. Not to mention that I love boaters, but they, they weren't, uh, they were kind of flaky. <laughs> They'd be like, yeah, I like it. That was about it. Aw, oh, Ray, thank you. Yay, I heard that same alert sound on someone else's stream and I was like, oh, that's such a happy sound. My, my next water bottle or pins. Hey, that helped for the vibration pads for the cameras. I can't wait to try those. Oh, yeah. Oh, the phone. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll let you guys know. It was um, by the same people who make my water, the this, this spray bottle, and they're called Full Circle. And it looked like this, but it was white here and wood here. It looked really nice. It looks really nice. Yeah, Malin, I think you would love that, you know? Let's see, this, I feel like I could maybe do something there, so let's get this on there. All right, my least favorite part of the design process was like, you would spend months trying things all the time, right? You're, you're doing it, you're feeling really good about your design. And then all of a sudden you're laying in bed one night and you're like, wait a minute, what if I do this? And you really have to like, sometimes you have to bite, bite the bullet and you can't act on that because the time is gone 
And then you're you're like making a plea to the sales department and the sales department doesn't want to talk to designers at all <laughs> unless they get to tell them what they want, right? So I'd be in there going, hey, um, I just had this idea. What do you guys think of it? Can I push back this design? And they're like, we're already selling this. Like we're already like telling stores we have this design coming out. They've been asking for this kind of product. And you're like, yeah, but look, this is what I could do. And, and they're like, yeah, but you don't even know for sure if it's gonna work. And you're like doing your little pitch. And, and you know, as a designer, you, you really have very little say in what the, um, what's allowed. I just cut off all reference for my grain line. Um, it's not at all like what people think as a designer. You are you don't get to decide at all if something goes forward. And so you're you're begging sales and maybe the CEO if they're involved. It's kind of a pain. So, but they're the ones who sell it, right? <laughs> yeah, right. I used to live somewhere. Well, I lived, we lived in Humboldt, Sydney, and I worked for that company. I didn't have a raincoat, and I was a full-time cyclist in the rain <laughs> and as my going wig if they gave me one of my own designs <laughs> that they modified for streetwear <laughs> yeah right Sydney totally it's because they spend a lot of time underwater <laughs> I couldn't handle it some of the stories they would tell be like hey, no. so yeah All right, we got our, these are my least favorite pieces to cut. These really long facings and plackets. I got to research how this placket's done. I love at the beginning of the instructions. This is the first product pat pattern we've sewn in a real long time where I actually brought the instructions on my trip and I, I was reading them because I wanted to make sure we could get through the all the sewing by the end of Saturday. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think that this will go into next week, but that's okay because the next project we have next week, which is the North Star hoodie, North Star, Star pullover, what the heck's that called? And um, I think I can sew that in one day. So I'm not too worried about it if it goes to next Wednesday, but I wanted to be as familiar as, as possible. But in the instructions, when you get to the placket, <laughs> the directions say, all right, now pay attention. Now, now is, you guys screw your head on straight right now. They don't say that specifically, but that's basically what they're saying, and I love that. It's like, all right, now, now you really need to start focusing. Okay, you need a, we need a lot of these. I need one of these. I have one other pocket. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Oh, that's my big pocket. Okay, I need four of those. What about this? Any chance? Ooh, so close, so close. Is it on green? Look at that, I could fit it in there if I took it off green, but. Oh. Ah, it's usually cold when it rains. It's just kind of terrible to sew. I totally agree with you that heavier coat jacket stuff. Because when you start lining it, it really adds to the layers at your um, places like the openings. Get totally overwhelmed. <laughs> I, I agree with Ray, whatever you do, Malin, would be really good because you do so much research that I think um, it would be quite a epic thing. All right, let's see. Let's get some more big pieces on here. We've cut out the front and the back. We have our sleeves here. Dang, we've got a lot done already. We have our sleeves. It's a two-piece sleeve with a cuff. Um, here's the collar and it goes along the length grain. Okay, it's a nice long piece. This, I think we need two of these, yep. One of these and one of these, so these can be on one layer. And we'll do, yeah. maybe I won't. Maybe what I'll do is go like this.
<laughs> Alright, let's get this close. I can kind of see a ripple, so I'm just making sure. It did, Sydney. I really enjoyed that project. That was really fun. I liked the Kelly Anorak. Are they doing the lined one? Is that why it's stressful? I did find, we, we found a couple of weird things, not weird things with that pattern, but I know that that placket was, uh, when I sewed it, I was like, all right, this is easy to sew, but the instructions are really confusing. So hopefully they found how to do it. There's something right here under the, I just need to check it. Is it just a wrinkle? Oh yeah, okay, I see. There we go, there we go, okay. I have some of my fabric hanging off the table, so that's kind of making it funky. Yeah, exactly, Malone. My husband also has pretty long, long arms. I could tell he was checking that out last night for sure. I cut one sleeve out, so <laughs> I can tell I cut it out kind of badly, too. So it has this little jog here, and that is the vent for your cuff. There's even a pleat in the elbow area here. See, I'm not sure I got this cut right here. Oh, I did, okay, good. Oh, I didn't get it over here. Oh yeah, exactly, Sydney. That is kind of one of the dangers with a waterproof fabric. Oh, of course, Betsy. Yeah, yeah, I made another raincoat this year, the Kelly Anorak, for me. It was way more involved than this is gonna be. <laughs> I can already tell. <laughs> Just because the there's a lot there's a lot of pieces with that and why was that one? I really focused on the fit of that one because I was kind of nervous and I think that's another thing about that pattern is that the they don't really say that I could see anywhere, because I looked, whether you are Basing the measurements of which jacket you pick out on your wearing all your clothes under your jacket or not. And so I, I really focused on the sleeve fit because I don't like feeling hemmed in in my jacket. And, you know, I'm definitely going to wear like a lightweight sweater in the winter under my jacket, my raincoat. And so it needs to fit that. And I, I wasn't sure if it allowed for that. And it fit pretty good, but I ended up going back and forth on the sleeve and the armhole fit. And it, it does, it ended up fitting perfectly, but I feel like I could have monkeyed around with it less. And I think what I ended up doing was picking a size, like I did the width of one size and the length of a smaller size, you know? I can't remember, don't quote me on any of that. If you're making the Kelly Anorak though, you might wanna check it out first. All right, so there's a little pleat here, and I think a little pleat here, and I think these notches that aren't the same depth, I do think they go together. There's two pleats, and I couldn't find these when I was sewing the prototype, so you wanna make sure you probably mark those, even if you don't cut them, because you, you might need them, and if you don't, at least you have them, and you can just ignore them. All right, so I have a lot of fabric, wow. I feel like I could have bought half the fabric. Partly it's because this fabric is uh, 62 inches wide. 
that's almost, that's like 10 inches wider than what's required. Oh, that's a good tip, Jules. Mullins in Sweden. All right, so we need two of these. And I'm wondering if I can get two, I can, okay. So we'll, get this out. I'm gonna line my fold up at, that I can see and you probably can't. To put it in my pocket there. Oh, cool. Yeah, Betsy, that's awesome. Yeah, did you see, uh, you were here early enough, did you see that one um, gal in the hashtag? The hashtag is WBM utility jacket and there is one gal wearing it. It looks great on her. Her lining looks really cute. Let's just move all the, this all the way over and maybe we can get some flaps over there. So this is the two, lower pockets. So there is two lower flapped pockets on this and two chest pockets, one of which has a flap, one doesn't. You can make them both or with or without though, whatever you want. And then um, I'm not doing the shoulder little things like members only thing. My husband was like, no. I was like, okay, I got it. So. He was like, thank you so much for asking. <laughs> he seemed visibly relieved. All right, I'm also doing snaps, so I'll be putting on snaps uh, early on. So if I have better luck too. All right, let's see, can I get any flaps in this? I need two of this one. I can get two here. Ooh, I can get this pocket though. It's a bigger piece. I was trying to get the biggest piece in the scraps, you know? Oh, have you not heard of them, Malin? Is that a good place for you to buy for shipping? Oh yeah, the flight suit for the gardening. Mine is is so, it's coming in so handy. So if you make yours for gardening, Betsy, this is one thing I really wish mine had. And I think I thought of this when I was sewing it, but I didn't do it. But if you end up watching those streams, I might, you get a gold star because I ended up, that was my longest stream ever. I was there for like six hours. It was epic. Um, cause I finished it on that Saturday. I don't know why I was so driven to finish it, but, um, the one thing I feel like it could use is a, a hip, like a lower thigh pocket for your gardening shears because putting them in your back pockets or your chest pocket is just not a great idea. And, um, I'm going to probably take mine apart and add it. Oh, really Jules? I don't see that message. That's cool. They have threaded expands when, expands when wet. Hmm, that's interesting. I think I just changed the grain line of this, didn't I? It doesn't look like it though. But I'm not gonna take a chance because it's the flap and I don't want it to look directionally different. Yeah, you're always welcome to repeat yourself. I miss things and other people might too. All right, so all we have left now is the, uh, unfortunately, these really long pieces. I hate that when that happens. But you know, it is a really wide fabric. So we got more cut down there. Otherwise we would have had more pieces to sit next to these long pieces. Because I think there's only, I think they're like cut one. Yeah, cut one and cut one. So those two can go there. This one's cut two. We have all these cuffs. This is gonna get taken up good. We have four of these and two of these. So that 
that, that, the cuff is cut four, and then this is cut one. All right, we're good. Do you think my cutie patootie would look good in a, like a Sorrento bucket hat, a matching Sorrento bucket hat? I like that he's starting to embrace being called patootie. <laughs> At first he was like. <laughs> I was like, I didn't mean for that to happen. <laughs> All right, so this will fit in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off this piece here. Oh, that's cool. All right, so let's put this, uh, of course I just cut off my selvage, which is my one of my reference points for my grain line. <laughs> we were just talking about this in my um, Patreon Zoom yesterday. We talked, we had such a good conversation about like grain lines and um, what was the other thing we talked about? Grain lines and basically like cutting the fabric. It was kind of cool. All right, I'm gonna leave that there. And we talked about how you had to sometimes put your piece back on there to find it. I just did that. All right, we're getting down there. We're almost done, you guys. You guys are troopers. So I think tomorrow, the first part of the sewing is basically assembling the body of the jacket. The fronts, the backs, pockets, um, some snaps, and then, I can't remember, I think then it goes to the zip facing, I mean the zipper in the pockets. I don't know why I just said facing. Always to your center. I'm pretty good at notching with my rotary knife, but if you're uncomfortable with that, just use your scissors. Yeah, I have two of those jewels and um, I've been thinking about like waterproofing one with the otter wax. I think that would be fun. Then in the near future, I have a video coming out on uh, waterproofing with otter wax. I do it on my porch too. So you can, with the dogs sleeping under the table, it was very risky that day. Not to mention it was really hot. But I was thinking like, oh, maybe I'll do it to one of my bucket hats. So I just flipped my fabric so that it's right side up. Just so I'm consistent. This is my selvage. A little bit of shape there at the neck. Oh yeah, Discovery Fabrics. I would love to order from them. The shipping is really expensive. Or was that what it was? I think it was, because I, I, gosh, I found a lot of fabrics I really loved on their site. I think it was that I didn't need much. I think that's what it was, and I was like, okay, all said and done, all I needed was this big of a piece of some fleece for some slippers and it was gonna cost me $50. And I, I, I will admit, I will do crazy things like that occasionally when it's the right thing and it was a gift, you know, so, but I was like, you know, I just can't do that. My niece and nephew, these are my niece and nephew and I adore them, but the thing is they're gonna outgrow these, you know, next month. <laughs> so, <laughs> hi Angela, how's it going? Oh yeah, oh, you got a 8,700. Congratulations. That's really cool. Waterproof dogs. Oh God, they'd be all waxy, Malin. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so um, yeah, Angela, there's a few people here that have got the 8700. 
I have the 8700-7, but it's identical. It just doesn't have that, you know, that thread snip and the, just a few of those like quality of life features. Great machine, such a great machine, I love it. Yeah, and um, Terry, did you put yours together? I don't know if Terry's still here. And then Adina, we haven't seen Adina much. She put hers together all by herself. Um, and if I, I haven't checked the Facebook group, I apologize for anyone who's requested to be in it. I just couldn't, it's been acting really weird and I think it's because I was traveling out of state. Yeah, see there's Terry. Terry is mama said so, Angela. So um, she has that machine as well. Yeah, that is so cool. I hope you love it. Um, and don't be afraid of the oil or the speed. Like that is the oil thing is once it's poured in there, it's you don't think about it. Just when you move it, keep your machine level. I have a whole long video. You don't have to watch the whole thing. I have a long video on it. And it's good for people who are thinking about getting an industrial machine and it's a machine maintenance video. Um, there's some really like just simple things in that video that you might want to look at. And there's a ton of timestamps. It's pretty um, thorough, very thorough. And I give it demonstrations. So yeah, Terry has two of them now. <laughs> Terry has more of them than me. Okay, so we just need one layer of this. I need four of this, two of this and four of this. So let's get over here to this cut piece here. So we can put those. This, I can see the grain line on the, when I fold it like that, it kind of shows up in the light. That's awesome, Angela, we're happy to have you. It's a great group. Everyone's really awesome here. No egos. Well, I'm sure we all have egos, but you know what I mean. <laughs> oh gosh, that was a little crooked, wasn't it? Like I said, you know, sometimes when you get started cutting, but you're, you, you try and kind of correct it and your machine, your knife is like, nope, I really need to do that. And you're like, but I don't want you to do that. I think it's those angles are a little tricky because it can't grab onto a grain line, you know? Yeah, and if you're in that, in the SoSo -so Facebook group, you don't have to be, it's very chill. Um, it's not like I'm on there all the time going, hey everybody, how's it going, you know what I mean? Um, but it is a good place to be like, hey, uh, has anyone seen this issue? Or, oh, I have this really great fabric um, and I'm looking for a pattern for it. Does anyone have some ideas? Or if you wanna post a fit issue, and you'd be nervous to do that publicly anywhere else. It's good for that. Good night, Jules. Thanks for coming. Sleep well. We're almost done. You won't miss anything. Ooh, that felt so satisfying. That like caught the grain line just perfectly. And look, it just stayed in there. Oh, I love that. I love cutting on the length grain like this. So good. Uh, this is the cuff. All right, so all we have left is these two pieces, really. That wasn't too bad. think hmm, I wonder I'm gonna cut this off like this and then we'll get those two over there and then we're done <laughs> I 
I think that is the, Ray, that is like perfectly encapsulates the difference of a live stream and probably a lot of my videos for better or worse because I think like a lot of videos really stick to the instructional part in a really simple way and they don't really deviate much outside of what you need to know to do the thing. But I, and I know you guys like this, but it makes my, to me, it makes my instructional videos feel a little bit clunky and wordy because I'll go like, the reason you want to do this is because of this or, you know, make sure you don't do this or one time this happened to me when I was doing this, you know, and it's like, I know those things are really useful, but I think someone also will see the length of the video and go, well, this other person does it in 10 minutes, you know. Um, but I also think like those little subtle things are literally the things that make your sewing life more, more enjoyable and um, make you better, you know, which also makes your sewing life, you know, more enjoyable when you get better and better. Same for me. Okay, that's it. I have quite a bit left, probably a yard and a half. I, you know, I could probably make myself like a, a vest, a waterproof vest. Matchy, matchy. <laughs> we could be Mr. and Mrs. Patootie. Okay. All right, so let's put these pattern pieces away. And my, let's do a better job. These are my lining pattern pieces. This is the little, if you need this piece, don't forget it. This is the shoulder strap. If you want that members only look. All right, here's our jacket. And let's start trying to layer them in the order I think we're sewing them. Or maybe we'll take our picture too. We have pockets and plackets. We'll put the plackets together, pocket stuff together. This is all neckline, sleeve, sleeve, cuffs. This just, it's all right here in front of me. I might as well do this right now, right? This is the, is this front? Right, facing. Oh, it's the spacing, sorry. Okay. Another pocket. Another flap. Facing. Front, front. Yoke. Okay, so we have our body. We have our collar and our facing. This facing goes with the um, lining. because this will probably get sewn to the lining first um, on the back and then you attach the whole lining to the jacket. This is after this probably, we'll put it on top though. We're ready. All right, so it's gonna go pockets, zipper, sleeve, pretty sure. I might have that out of order and the body on um, first. Yay. Ready to go. Whole project. It's a raincoat. <laughs> Ray, the gaming, like the gaming. <laughs> my gaming is miserable right now because my internet at home is so bad. It's so frustrating. And it's definitely my way to unwind at night and so and hang out with a friend and talk and um, not talk talk like 
but just like have fun. And I just can't, like my internet's so bad. I was testing it last night and it went from eight download, which isn't where it should be. It should be a little higher than that, which is still bad. And then um, all the way down to three download and the upload was like 0.5 kilobytes to maybe 1.8. Here I have 50 and 50, so everyone's like, just bring your PlayStation up to your office like, and just move out. Like, I don't know. I don't think that's uh, going to happen. So, all right, well, um, I'm going to start sewing this tomorrow. So if you're interested in watching the sewing, I'm going to do the first half. And like I said, we're going to get through, let's see here. I'm pretty sure. So we're going to start with our pockets. We're gonna assemble the body. Yep, yep, face. We're gonna do the waist casing. So I'm gonna cut a sample of that out. Um, oh, and then we're gonna do the sleeves. I think I can get through all of that tomorrow, no problem. It depends on if we experiment with the thread first, but I'm gonna try and do a little bit of that today. And if I don't notice, if I cannot get it to work at all, I don't know, I think I'll still use it unless it's too heavy. Um, Cause what I'm thinking is water corrodes. And so if I use a cotton thread, the you know, it gets wet eventually it can um, wear out. Do I think he's gonna have the jacket so long that the cotton thread, cotton poly thread's gonna wear out? No. Nice cutting with you. Thanks Terry. Oh, thanks Ray. Yeah, hit the like, subscribe if you're new here. We live stream Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, every week, unless I'm, you know, doing something rare. Um, next month is my three year anniversary and we're gonna probably hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of July, maybe mid August. So that's really cool. I didn't think that would happen that fast. I know that's not fast for some folks. <laughs> <laughs> but for a sewing channel and a live streaming sewing channel, that's pretty good. Because I'm also not doing um, clickbait sewing videos, which there's a million of those out there. So. <laughs> you hit it when you're re-watching. You re-watch it? Wow, what a try hard. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Okay, well, cool. Um, let's see. What Was I going to show you one other thing? No, right? We're good. No, because I was going to show you the spray bottle and we did that. We we actually used it on the fabric. So zippers. Oh, we talked about zippers. That's right. Oh, cool, Barbara. You working on a quilt? That's awesome. You know, that may I oh, I have a lot of things. I need to get back on track. I can't just sit there and get hair off into a direction right now. I got back on track for being gone for a week. So cool. Yeah, we talked zippers, Emily. That's right. Everybody had zipper questions. That was fun. I love that. All right, cool. Um, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for the $10, Ray. I really appreciate that. You know, buying water bottles and pens. That's great. I love a try hard crew too. <laughs> you know, but we like to chill too. So, all right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks a bunch and um, happy sewing. Bye.